In 1993, Wilbur and Orville Wright created the first successful powered airplane. Thanks to their research and development, many engineers were able to improve their build and create better jets and airplanes over the past decades. Out of all these planes, there's one component that stands out, and that component helps make them fly, and that's the jet engine. In this video, I'm going to give you a basic understanding of what a jet engine is its history, how it works, and how I've designed my own jet engine over time. Well, a summary of how I've designed my jet engine over time. To find out more, watch this video. Hey guys, I'm MJ Sanga, your average engineer. Now you may be wondering, what is a jet engine? A jet engine is a type of reaction engine discharging a fast moving jet of heated gas, which is usually air, that generates thrust by jet propulsion. Now, before we design a jet engine, why don't we go through its history to know what it is and learn a little bit of how it works. The jet engine is mostly based on Newton's third law, which states that for every action, there is an equal but opposite reaction. Using this law, there have been numerous inventions from different scholars with the sole purpose of creating an engine that can fly a plane. For example, Henry Guilford, who became the first person to build an airship that was powered by a three horse steam engine. This was the first aircraft. Unfortunately, it was too heavy to fly. Then in 1896, Samuel Langley successfully flew a pilotless airplane, which was powered by a steam engine called an aerodrome. It could only fly for one mile and then it would run out of steam. He tried to build a second plane, but in 1903, it crash landed immediately it was launched. However, in that same year, the Wright brothers flew their first successful plane. This was powered by a 12 horsepower, gas powered, reciprocating internal combustion engine with two propellers. And over the decades, Scientists and engineers have built more improved and efficient planes that can fly for more than one mile and for longer hours without crashing, of course. Like in 1939, when Hans van Ohans German Henkel HE-178 airplane, that was officially the first airplane to successfully use a gas turbine engine in August 27, 1939. And then comes 2002, when General Electric built the GE-90115B turbofan, which was regarded as one of the most powerful jet engines in the world, with a thrust of 569 kilonewtons. That is a lot. Jet engines have a lot of history, but I'm sure that pretty much summarizes it. Now we know a little bit of jet engines and planes, let's deep dive a little bit on how jet engines work. Like I said earlier, it's based on Newton's third law of motion. Using this principle, the engine will pull in cold air through the fan and it will force it through its passage at the front. The air then passes through the compressor. This is part of the jet that has many blades. These increase the air pressure eight times more as well as increase the temperature. Afterwards, it passes through the combustion chamber. The compressed air mixes with the fuel and at the same time, the fuel catches fire. The air supports the ignition because of the oxygen. The combustion chamber is made up of high ceramic material because the temperatures go to almost 2,700 degrees Celsius. High energy flow comes out of the combustor and then goes into the turbine, causing the turbine blades to rotate. The turbines are linked by a shaft to turn the blades in the compressor and to spin the intake fan at the front. This rotation takes some energy from the high energy flow that's used to drive the fan and the compressor. The gases produced in the combustion chamber move through the turbine and spin its blades. The turbines of the jet spin around thousands of times. And then lastly, it passes through the nozzle. It is at the nozzle that the needed thrust is produced to move the plane forward. And that's how a jet engine works. So now we know a little bit of the history and we know a little bit of the working principle. So let's deep dive into the mathematics involved. 
because as engineers, we use mathematics a lot. And we're going to start with Newton's second law of motion. We'll define the force as the momentum of the object changed over time. Now to find momentum, we simply multiply the mass of the object times its velocity. And since mass remains constant, velocity is what's going to change over time. From there, we can expand the equation as shown. And if we simplify it, we get force is equal to mass times acceleration. See? But it is not that simple. When it comes to turbines, we're not really dealing with mass, but we're dealing with fluid because the fluid will change over time. So we need to consider the fluid instead of the mass. So since we need to consider the fluid, we're going to create a variable known as the mass flow rate, which is denoted by m dot. And to find this, we simply multiply the velocity, density, and area of the fluid. We can then substitute it in the equation force is equal to momentum over time. We can exchange the change in momentum across the proportion with the mass flow rate as shown here. We will denote the exit of the station device as E and the streamline flow as zero as shown in this equation. Now, I don't want to bore you with all the math involved, but Deriving this produces what is known as the general thrust equation. And with this equation, you can use it to find the thrust needed to move a plane over a certain distance. So now we have our history, we have our basic understanding of the working principle, and we know the math involved. So then we can design it. By the way, if you're enjoying this video and you find this video very informative, please hit the like button. Subscribe for more of my upcoming content and click the bell icon to get notified when new videos are out. As much as theoretical knowledge is important, so is the practical. And in my upcoming videos, I'm hoping to make them a bit more practical by building their designs. So you better click on that bell icon and subscribe to see more of my upcoming content. So back to this video, there are many ways of starting a new design. One way is doing a lot of research and taking all your time to understand the principle before physically creating a design. Another way is what is known as reverse engineering, which is basically the reproduction of another part by analyzing its construction and then improving or editing the design over time. I picked a little bit of both, mostly because I gave myself a deadline for this video and learning from others is a good way to know where to go next, what not to do, and how to improve designs that you are making. I use SolidWorks for this design. It took me a while, but with the help of YouTube and community forums, I was able to improve my design and my design skills over time. I first started by building the housing. This would give me a basic understanding of where I would put the compressor, turbine, and all the other parts, and how many blades would be needed, and so on. The housing also gave me an idea of how big the component will be, or rather the jet engine will be. I then went on by building the compressor and its blades. I decided to make the blades and the housing for this part smaller as the air goes through so that it can compress it further. Then from there, I built the turbine. I also built a hollow ring with a few holes where the fuel will come out already ignited. It's at this point where the air and fuel will mix. I finally designed the nozzle where the thrust will be released from. To ensure that the design is efficient, I then used FEA analysis to see how air passes through the design. From there, I can make changes to my design if my FEA results are not satisfactory. And then boom, my jet engine is designed. There are many advantages with jet engines that make them good for air travel. One is that a low grade fuel type can be used. They don't need high grade fuels to produce high thrust. Any type of fuel can be used to produce the thrust needed. Due to it following Newton's third law of motion, they do not have any at balance forces that may cause a major problem over time. Also, there's not really a lot of maintenance problems because there are not a lot of mating parts and the weight to power ratio is very low. As always, every design has disadvantages. But as we learned at the beginning through its history, it's improved over the years and has become better. Jet engines are used in aircraft, sea transport, and even automation. 
they are an efficient way of harvesting thrust and they will improve over time. If you like this video and you want to learn about electric motors, please click the link right here. And if you want to stay up to date with my upcoming content, please hit subscribe. And if you like this video, please hit the like button. Also, I would like to learn how to improve my videos over time. So please write in the comments what you think could be improved next. That would help me over time improve my videos. Thank you for watching. Have a blessed week.